Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome you to our online broadcast. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, that you showed up. So listen, we want you to click your shares, you know, share this information, set up your watch parties. Let someone know that we're on right now. Listen, all of our Spirit of Fire people, let people know that we're on. I believe that this is going to be a word that will transform, that will change your life. It is going to be an encouraging word. This is a prophetic word, I believe, that God has given me to share with you um, and with the general public. And I'm so ready to get into this. We want to welcome all of our first time visitors and guests online. If this is your very first time, we want to know who you are. We want to acknowledge you. We want to show you how much we appreciate you guys showing up here today. And uh, we just want you to go ahead and put your information there. Just let us know who you are, where you come um, logging in from, whatever state, whatever country, whatever city. I don't care wherever you are. Let us know where you're logging in from. There's some information that will come up in our comments section where you can connect with us. You can also go to our Spirit of Fire um, website at spiritoffire.us and just click on connect and let us know who you are. Um, and we promise we do not give out your information to third parties. Uh, we just want to know who you are, where you're logging in from, so that we can connect with you. So we just want to say welcome to everybody. And so listen, I'm so excited um, about this today. Um, I'm just in a place where I'm so ready to release this word. We've been in our series dealing with nothing just happens. The word of the Lord came at the beginning of this year that this will be a year of kingdom renaissance. In other words, there will be an influx of God's will, his innovation, creativity, ideas, whether it's in technology, science, arts, and entertainment, um, just in every area that God wants his will implemented in the earth. And so today I'm still continuing in that series, but I feel as though that there's, there's a, not a hiccup, but there's something that God wants me to insert um, during this time as I was sitting down and I just said, Lord, what do you want me to tell your people? What is it that you want me to share with them? And so before I let you know that topic of what he wanted me to share, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. And so before we even do that, go ahead, get your stuff together, get your, your water, your juice, your coffee, whatever it is. I need for you to listen. I need for you to pay attention. I don't want you to be distracted in other places, other platforms. God has you here right now. And I want you to listen intently to what the Spirit of God has to say to you. There's going to be the Word of God that's being just the Word that I'm going to start sharing, but then I believe something's going to hit. I believe something is going to really minister to you today. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to, to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation, knowledge of your Word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom and knowledge and good understanding of the Word of God. We do approach the Holy Written Word reverently. We thank you right now, Father, for the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you is manifesting, that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted Word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you and we thank you. Father, we also covered the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation and demonstration so that somebody's life will be transformed and changed for the better. Let great encouragement hit your people. And Father, we even ask for the spirit of faith, the gift of faith, to be imparted into your people, to be strengthened with might by your Spirit in their inward man. And so we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor for it now. In Jesus' mighty, holy, and majestic name that we do pray praise and give thanks amen and amen all right y'all um you know it's always different when you're looking into a camera and not seeing people physically but i know that there is no distance in the spirit and i know that you guys are here with us in spirit and in truth and i want you to get engaged with this i want your expectation to be heightened and so it's real interesting that i'm even using that phrase because today I'm going to talk to you about coming out of deferred hope. Coming out of deferred hope. As I said um, in a subtopic to that can be what to do when it hasn't happened yet. 
what to do when it hasn't happened. Um, as I was sitting and as I was contemplating and, and meditating on what I was supposed to share, and the first thing that just rose up in me was talk to them about deferred hope. That many people have been out there and their deferred hope is nothing else but unmet expectations. That there are things that haven't happened yet in the lives of people and it's like there are a lot of people who are dealing with deferred hope right now. That what they have believed for, they haven't seen yet. And so he says, I need my people to be encouraged today. And so my job is to strengthen you and to encourage you today. And so as I begin to just meditate and think on these things, I instantly went to the scripture in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. And this is in the New Living Translation. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. And a lot of times when you have, when you believe for something for so long and it hasn't happened, there's a tendency for, for us to draw back off of believing the thing that God spoke to us, whether it's out of his written word, whether it was a prophetic word that was spoken to you and you say, you know what? I've heard this word and I heard this word, but pastor, I'm kind of getting a little weary in my faith where this thing is concerned. And God is saying, I'm coming to give you a boost today to let you know and to encourage you. Don't you dare let that thing go that I spoke to you in times past for it shall come to pass. If you don't faint, give up, cave in or quit. And so God is saying, I need for you to begin to think about some things. And as he began to speak to me and I begin to write some things down and then all of a sudden I say, OK, God, grant me wisdom to speak to them skillfully today. Show me what to do. Show me things that I need to tackle in this message. Show me things that people need to hear. What is it that they need to hear? And this is how I want to get this thing started. And as we go, just 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 stay with me as I work through this thing. That he says sometimes, and this is just something I just begin to type out and write down. Sometimes you need to adjust or manage your expectations to line up with God's will. Sometimes people don't realize that the thing that they've been believing for, you got to make sure and adjust. Does it line up with the will of God for my life and the plan and the path for my life? Because many times there are people who are believing for things that may not be in the plan and will of God for them because they've watched other people and they've looked at other people's past and they've watched other people's assignments. And then all of a sudden God is saying, yes, that's what I have for them, but I have something else for you. And if you keep trying to believe for something else outside of what I plan for you, then you have unmet expectations because I'm only ob obligated to fulfill my word in your life, whether it's the written or the rhema word. Now let me go ahead and deal with something else here. Not just dealing with assignments, but also I want to deal with the aspect of when you know it's the will of God and something that you know that God has promised and you know that he has promised you certain things and you released your faith for it, but you didn't see it come to pass. We're going to deal with that today because God wants you to be strengthened because Satan has attacked your belief and he's attacked your belief system. And he's attacked your joy so he can suck your strength out so that you no longer will trust and believe God for what, for the thing that you once was so adamant about. But God says now they're beginning to wane. They're beginning to think, well, maybe it's not God's will because I haven't seen it yet. This is why it's so important that we know the will of God, the word of God but not only the written word with his promises in it, but also what's the thing that God has been speaking to us directly through his voice, by his voice, by his spirit. And we haven't seen it yet. There's a portion I want you to, now I'm talking to two different people in this thing. I'm talking to the person that maybe you've gotten off into something you shouldn't have. And that's why you haven't seen the, the, the hope manifest. But then I'm talking to the person also that you know what it is you're believing for. You know it's the plan and the will and the purpose and the, and, the, and, the, and the will of God for your life and the promise of God, but you haven't seen it. So I'm talking to two different categories here today. 
And so one of the things I want you to understand is this is why it's important for you to know God's word and what is promised to you so that like you know what you can and should believe for. This is why it's also important to know the assignment and purpose for your life, because your provision, your fruitfulness and faithfulness is attached to that assignment. There is a portion assigned to you for your grace and assignment that may be different from somebody else's. And you should not try to go after something that is not yours. That's important. Because this is, this is going to be a little heavy for some people. And some people is like, okay, God, I'll make the adjustment. And one of the things that he is saying this too, and this is for the individuals, that you begin to lower your expectations. God says stop settling because so much time has passed since the promise was spoken and you have yet to see it come to pass. He says don't you dare settle now because you were believing at one point and you were making forward progress and now all of a sudden you're beginning to back off. And so God is saying this, I need for you to begin to believe again. I need for you to stir yourself up again. You say, okay, pastor, okay, 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 what is it that I need to hear? What is it that you're saying now? God is saying this, you've de- your hope has been deferred because you had an expectation that now all of a sudden you got to understand what hope is. Hope is an earnest expectation of good happening in your life. There's something that you've been believing for, but hope is always in the future tense. But now God is saying you have to release your faith to bring into the natural what you have put off into the future. And he says it's no longer in the future. Your hope will no longer be deferred if your faith can be stirred up to believe to receive the thing that's been promised to you. And you got to believe again. You got to believe again. He took me to Abraham. And the promise that God made to Abraham in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verses one through six. And I'm going to try to stay on track here and stay on point. And I believe I'm just supposed to stay here and then something is going to hit. Something is going to hit. I'm believing for it. That something is going to hit. But I want to make sure I'm obedient to what I need to do. So in Genesis, chapter 15, verses one through six. It says here, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, now you got to understand, I I don't want to get stuck on here. But when he says, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great and thy exceeding great reward, he's telling him in translation, he's saying, I am El Shaddai. I am the many breasted one. I'm the God of all sufficiency, all supply. Everything that you need is in me. And Abram said, Lord God, what will now watch this? He says, Lord God, what will thou give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, behold, to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord. Watch this. And he believed in the Lord and he believed in the Lord. And he believed in the Lord, the word that the Lord spoke unto him. And it was counted unto him for righteousness or right standing, right position with God. Now, so much I need to unpack here because God began to show me. He took me back to Matthew 6, 33, and it talked about even starting in verse 25. And you thinking about all these things that you have need of, what you're going to eat, drink, where, where you're going to live. All of this stuff, he says, do the Gentiles seek. But he says, seek ye first my kingdom, my way of doing and being my way of doing and being right. My, my method of operation and my righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. He says, so not only do you need to function like I'm telling you to function, 
but you need to function in the righteousness that has been granted unto you, which comes by faith, which comes by believing. See, for by grace are we saved through faith, not of works, least any man should boast. Now, we got to understand that we've been made the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. And because of faith, faith, faith in Christ, we've been made in right standing with God. Not based off of what we do, but based off of who we believe in and what we believe. Your believing has everything to do with this. And he says, and he believed the Lord and he believed in the Lord and it, he counted it him for righteousness. So God shows up. He makes his, this introduction to Abram saying, I am El Shaddai. I am your shield. I am your exceeding great reward. And then Abram comes back and says, what will you give me seeing that I go childless? Listen, that's the thing that was on his heart. That's the thing that was pressing on his heart. He had no child. As some of you, the spirit of God was saying that there's been words spoken in many of you out there that for those that are believing even for children, God says you need to hold on to that word that I don't care how long it's been and what is taking place because I'm, I don't want to go ahead of myself because the spirit of God also is saying too though. He says that this is still a year and a time of restoration for you. There's a time of restoration for my body and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it's coming out of me. He says, I need for you to let my people know that they've heard this word before. They've heard about restoration. They've heard about me coming and blessing them with things that they lost things that never took place. But God is saying, I need to fulfill this thing for them because many have been crying in secret. Many have been coming to me in their private time and saying, God, when? Because I believe I'm doing everything that I need to do. I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. And God says, you need to hold on to your profession of faith. Hold on to that promise that I spoke to you for it shall come to pass if you don't let it go. He says it was counted to him for righteousness. Abraham had a promise from God concerning his seed. So he had something to hold on to. And it was 25 years before Isaac was born. Can you imagine that? And Abraham could hang in there because God. Now, now this is the interesting thing. Now, now, before I get into this part, he said, listen, it was 25 years before he saw what God said. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine 25 years God spoke something and you haven't seen it yet? Don't you know how many people would have quit during that time? Because God said, well, God, I thought if you spoke it, it's supposed to happen instantly. The moment that you receive it, conception takes place. But sometimes the process of it manifesting may be at different points of times. But just know that if God promised it, he will bring it to pass. But you have to believe it and you have to stick with it. Now, what's the thing that caused Abram to stick with this promise that God made him? Now, I hadn't taught on this in years now, but God brought this thing back up as I was reading, even in the book of Genesis chapter 15. I want to go there real quick. Genesis 15 verses 17 through 18. Oh man, I'm telling you. Now, Abraham could hang in there because God made covenant with him. In the book of Genesis 15, 17 through 18, and it says, and it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Now, Abraham had set up this thing. He cut the covenant pieces, split them apart, and there was an alleyway of blood that was there. And so there was a, there, he, what he was doing, he was making blood covenant with God which was the strongest agreement known to man. And so in the same day, verse 18, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying unto thy seed, have I given this land from the, the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. God made covenant with his man. And Abram knew that if God made a covenant, it was sure as his name was Abram. Now this is before his name changed to Abraham, that God inserted himself into him. And now just like he's called us righteous, he began to call this man blessed and he called his seed blessed. And he was already calling the thing that be not as though it already was. And so God knew that for him, for Abram to believe this thing, he says, wait a minute, I'm going to show you how serious I am. I'm going to make covenant with you. 
just like he told us. I'm going to show you how serious I am by sending my son. Not only that, he called the Holy Spirit the earnest of the inheritance, the first, the first, uh, the first fruit of the possession, the first fruit of the promise, that when he says this, because I gave you not only my son, but I put my spirit in you, it was to let you know how serious I am about this covenant that I made with you. And you need to take this thing seriously because we're in such a society that if people break promises like it ain't nothing. And all of a sudden now God, God says, I'm not like man. I don't just let you go just because you messed up. I don't just quit on you because you made a mistake. He says, I'm with you. I am for you. I'm not against you. And you need to stop making, and I hear this. It's like somebody is in torment. And what's the word? Condemnation. Because you feel as though you messed things up. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. And God is saying, stop beating yourself up because I made the promise with you. And what that condemnation is doing, it is short circuiting your faith and contaminating your faith because you no longer believe that you deserve to receive what it is I promised unto you, says the Lord. And he says, I need you to get that out of you. I need you to get that guilt and shame off of you in the name of Jesus. And God is saying, I've already promised you this thing and it shall come to pass, but I need you to get involved with your faith and now reconnect with me and believe again. Let your faith be stirred up again to believe God. Pull out the notebook. Pull out the thing that the prophetic word that God spoke over to you that you didn't see come to pass and begin to bring it back unto him like never before. Okay, Holy Ghost. I remember years ago, I was about 16 years old and there was this guy that began to speak a prophetic word over me and my family. And there was this youth pastor and he began to go through all the children in the family. And all of a sudden he came to me and he began to speak the word of the Lord over my life. Now, this is very interesting that, listen, they recorded it. They video recorded it, and they also had it recorded on tape at that time. And what I did was I took that recording, and I listened to it over and over again. I wrote it down on paper. I could quote it verbatim what the word of the Lord was, and I received the word of the Lord. And I treated the prophetic word just like I treated the written word, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whether it's the written word, the logos, or the rhema word, the spoken word, you need to treat it the same. And just because the word was spoken, you got to treat it. Because some people just think the will of God is just going to be automatic. And God says, I need to get your faith engaged in this process now. I need you to go back and remember and begin to put me in remembrance. And that's what I begin to do. And then even in the book of Timothy, it says, give yourself completely to these things that I've spoken to you, that your profiting may appear to everybody. And what I begin to do, I begin to feed myself that word. I begin to listen to that prophetic word. I begin to hold on to what God said. And everything that was spoken in that word to me has come to pass in my life. Why? Not just because this person spoke it, but because I received it, I believed it, I meditated on it, and I trusted God for it, and then I began to act out on the things that God began to lead me to do in the process. And I never let it go. I'm not lying to you. And listen, and I began to go back and think, God, not only did you speak to me, you spoke to everybody else. And I remember some of those words that you spoke to other people. And I don't see that come to pass in their lives, but I saw what you said to me come to pass in my life. And I began to realize that I don't know what they did with it, but I knew I consumed myself with it. I consumed myself with that word. And I believe God and I wouldn't let it go. And what is it that you are you starting to let go? God says, don't you let that word go. You hang in there until you see it come to pass. The book of Romans chapter four, verses one through three. I was looking at my time, but right now, God said, I need to sow this thing in you. It's like, I can't be concerned about time right now. I got to be concerned about your spiritual well-being. You need to get this thing today. Romans chapter four, verses one through three. It says this. What shall we say then? It's talking about Abraham, that Abraham, my father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he, listen, hath whereof to glory, 
but not before God. For what the scripture, what say of the scripture? Abraham believed God. That's the point we want to deal with. Abraham believed God. Mike believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. Mike may believe God. Do you believe God? Do you believe God? You need to put, you need to put your name there. See, I'm putting my name there. I'm finding myself in the scripture. And Mike believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. See, I believe God. Because see, it, listen, it is impossible to please God without faith. He says this, this is the law of the kingdom. Listen, you can't have anything in my kingdom, he says, if you don't walk by faith. The law of faith is the law of the kingdom. It's how this thing works. It's the currency of the kingdom of God. And you cannot have a kingdom renaissance without walking by faith. We're going to have to believe God. We're going to have to trust God. And God is saying for some of you, your expectations have been too low. That's why you don't see some of the things you need to see because you're not believing bigger of me because now you got to realize that what I've called you and created you to do, I want to put you on display. And he says, now you've just been trying to see what you can do. And God is saying, I need you to go beyond what you can do and see what I can do through you, in you, and for you. And he says this, if you would just believe me for bigger, I would grant bigger to you. But I need you to do it because you're failing to ask for bigger because you're thinking that you got to get it done. And God is saying, no, I'm going to get it done in you and through you. You ask for a three bedroom and God says, I want to give you a five and six. He says, but you'd never ask me for it. He says, if you would just ask me, I'll get involved. I'll either bring your money up or bring the price down to fit where you are. Either way, I'll get to you what I need to get to you. If you at least just believe me for it. Did you ever even try to believe bigger? Did you even think to ask bigger? He says, if you will ask of me, all things are possible to him that believe. Now let's keep going. Verse 13 here in Romans, I'm skipping down to verse 13. It says, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world, talking about Abraham, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. In other words, if you were able to do it in and of your own works, faith has nothing to do with it because you did it. But your faith has to be involved so God can do it. See, you got to trust what he has already done through the finished work of Christ. And God is saying it ain't based off of what you're doing. It's based off what you believe in. Okay, come on. Let's keep going. He says, you got to believe. He says, because the law worketh wrath for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith. There's so much that I can unpack here, but, I, but for sake of time, and I got to stay on task. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, let's go back over this. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace, grace, God's unmerited, undeserved favor. Yes, you don't deserve it, but God in his loving kindness and his tender mercies has granted unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, and we need to receive it by faith. Yeah, you may not deserve that promotion. You may not deserve that loved one. You may not deserve that spouse, but God gave them to you. And God says, I gave them to you to fulfill and to accomplish together what I called you to do. God says, I gave you that assignment. I gave you that child. I gave you this opportunity. And he says, you need to function by faith in this thing. And you need to trust that what I promised you, I'm going to bring to pass. And he's saying this. He says, I need you to believe. He says, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going to go to verse 17 just for sake of time. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version. It says, as it is written, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. This is, this is a word ethnos. I made you a father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Faith says, cause those things which be not as though they were. He, now, let us, let's go over this again. He has appointed this. He says, now I'm going to go down to this part. Who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things. What is the non-existent thing that's going on in your life? That he has foretold and promised. Even though the thing God promised you, it seems non-existent, but God already spoke that thing in times past. Watch this. He has foretold and promised, and he speaks like it has already existed. 
This is what faith does. It calls the thing that be not as though it were, and it acts like it already is. That is just that simple. You have to believe that you have received the thing that God has spoken and begin to act like it already exists. It already is. I got to say it again for somebody. I keep hearing. It's like I can sense different people. So it's like I'm speaking to different people in the spirit right now as I'm talking. I can pick up on things and they're saying it's like somebody that's still trying to trying to wrap their mind around it. Well, God, how does that work in this situation? If the person is acting like they're not, they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you're still supposed to treat them like they're doing what they're supposed to do. That's faith. If the situation hasn't turned around yet, if your bank account doesn't look like it's supposed to be what God promised, you need to act like it. You need to believe and you need to trust that God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. So even if a bill comes in, your your demeanor doesn't change and your emotions don't rule you to now say, oh, Lord, what are we going to do now? Wait a minute. The same God that told you that wealth and riches was in your house and promised that he'll supply your every need is the same God that he ain't changing because the bill showed up. He didn't change the fact that by his stripes, you're already healed because the doctor says something different than what the word said. So why are you downtrodden? Why are you now sullen and low facing? And all of a sudden now, as soon as you heard the report, your heart dropped. Your heart dropped and sunk and fear tried to set in and you're going to have to resist and say, no, that does not change what God has already spoken and promised. He has already spoken in his word that by his stripes I'm healed. So even though the doctors say they found this, they said this, they're thinking this, it does not matter because whose report you're going to believe. I declare and decree that by his stripes I'm well, I'm healed, and I'm whole. I have the mind of Christ, the peace of God. Somebody may say, well, pastor, that may seem like you being a hypocrite. I ain't going to be two-faced. I'm going to keep it real. See, that's your problem. You're calling real the thing that you're going through, but I'm calling real what the word of God says. Does the word of God become more real to you than the situation that you're going through. Does the word of God, is it, is that more real? Come on now, come out of that pit. God says, come out of that sunken place. And he wants you to arise and shine for your light has come. And he wants you to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Because watch this. People who are seated in heavenly places walk by faith. People who are seated in heavenly places walk in the spirit. You see, see, you got to understand when you walk in the spirit, everything in this earth's realm, Glory to God can be transformed, can be changed to fit where you are seated. I am a king and a priest unto my God and kings legislate. Kings call and make decrees and the land has to follow the decree of the king. Come on, you king and you priest, you ruler in connection with God. You rule over your household. Your household is your personal kingdom. And you say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Sickness and disease can't rule in here. Poverty can't exist in here. We walk with an excellent spirit. We walk in the love of God and everybody got to line up in this kingdom. Glory to God. It, I rebuke every Every demonic force that will try to come and infiltrate my house, my children, my finances, my relationships, my marriage. I cancel you and curse you in Jesus name. Now you get out of here and don't you ever come back again. You a kingdom citizen. Function in your authority. Stop accepting the negative report. Come on now. Come on, man of God. Come on, woman of God. See, this is righteous indignation. I can sense it. That, oh boy, Satan has so bombarded people in their thoughts to make them think that it ain't worth it, to just give up and quit. There is such pressure, I sense, for people to quit like never before. And he is trying to make you quit before you see the promise. He wants, Satan said, well, why don't you just go on to heaven? Just go ahead and quit. Listen, listen, God, listen, you want to hear well done out good and faithful servant. You don't want to God say, why are you here this early, quitter? Why did you quit on my assignment? There are people who needed you on this planet. I needed you here. I needed you to impact lives. I didn't need you up here right now. I needed you to stay there because you were going to touch people's lives. You were going to help transform and change things. So don't just give them, say, I'm tired. Listen, that's why the strength of God abides in you. God's nature abides in you. The Holy Ghost abides in you. The spirit of might abides in you. Oh, I'm getting stirred up here. This is why he said, just preach my word. Watch what happened. See, as you just sow the word, 
You sow the word. You sow the word. We don't need no theatrics. The word of God is powerful. It's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the dividing of son of soul and spirit. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God will go in you and make you alive and quicken you and strengthen you. The word in the spirit. God says, don't you give up. Women of God who are out there believing for, for children. God says, listen, don't you let go of that promise. I spoke to you. Don't let go of it. He says, I love you. He says, I love you. He says, I love you. And I've heard your, cry, your cries and your prayers. He says, but now you got to rest and believe. Some people need to also, he says, some, some reasons, yeah, sometimes things can come in to mess up your faith. This is why he even said in, in uh, it might have been 1 Corinthians, he says, people that practice certain things, whether it's lasciviousness, um, perversions, or wickedness of any kind, he says, shall not inherit the kingdom of God, God's way of doing and being right. See, sin won't mess up your righteousness, but it can unravel and mess up your life. And sometimes when you're involved in things that you know God is saying to come out of, it can mess with your faith and it can disrupt certain things from happening and taking place. This is why we need to take inventory of our lives and say, Lord, if there is anything in me that is messing up this process, Holy Spirit, reveal it to me. Show me the things that I need to see so that we can deal with this, get rid of it so that now we can walk in the fullness of it. Mm -hmm. We got to deal with that part, too. I have to deal with that part, too. Because this is why he says, repent. Turn from it and get it back into my flow and my rhythm. Some of you, something as simple as you just don't believe anymore. You're not faithful the way you used to be faithful. You're just giving up on God. Giving up on your assignment. And God says, I need you to pick that thing back up. Yeah. He says, it ain't too late. You need to pick it back up again. Mm. Some of you thought that you missed windows and opportunities. God's saying you are still in the window of your season. Man, glory to God. Glory to God. He said some of you still in the window of your season. You heard that word last week. And we talk about seasons and opportunities. And some of you may have thought, God, I might have missed my opportunity. He says, no, you're still in the window of your opportunity. You just need to pick things back up again. Pick up where you left off. He says, refresh yourself. Let me, let, me, let me finish reading this in, in, in um, Romans 4, 17 through 25, the Amplified. Um, he's, let me start again. As it is written, he says, I have made you the father of many nations. He is appointed our father in the sight. He was appointed of our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. For Abraham, watch this, for Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. Human reason. See, there was a human reason that hope could have been gone. Listen, it's 25 years. You got to understand how old Abraham was and Sarah was. Just physically, physiologically, it's, it could have seemed impossible for them to conceive at that point in their lives. But God spoke the promise. He says, human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So the hope that he drew was from the word that he heard and it turned into faith. Now he believed God and he trusted God that what he said, because God made covenant with me and told me that I'm going to have a seed, even though in the physical, in the natural, it seems to be impossible that I can now conceive with my wife and that my desire will be turned to her and that all of my functionality will be intact for us to, to conceive. Come on now, you hear what I'm saying? That God says, I don't care. I'll override natural law to get my word to you. Glory be to God. Whatever I got to override, God, the supernatural, the spirit. Oh, come on. Can you come out? Okay. The natural is submitted to the spirit. The natural. Oh, what's this phrase I want to use? It's coming out of me. The natural, everything in the natural was birthed out of the spirit. So the natural is controlled by the spirit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You keep thinking that the natural is above the spiritual. Then this is why you're so busy looking at what you can see. But if you can get back in the spirit again by getting back and believing God's word, 
that whatever he has said can transform what you see. Whatever he has said can transform what we see. And we declare in the name of Jesus that health and healing, wholeness, provision, happiness, joy, peace, whatever the enemy has disrupted has to be now. Glory to God. God, man, I'm telling you, I'm trying to get this thing out. Part of me just want to pray in the Holy Ghost just to spit it out. But God is saying you need to transform your natural by what you speak out of your mouth, which comes from the spiritual. When you get your heart full of faith, you can call those things which be not as though they were. You can speak to a body and say, immune system, I command you to line up with the word of God and function as you were created to function. Body parts, I command you to be replaced. Organs, I command you to be restored. Kidneys, I command you to be restored. Lungs, I command you to be restored. Brain, I command you to be restored. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because I'm functioning in my kingdom authority, I'm functioning in my position in Christ, I'm functioning as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he has granted me authority to speak to this situation and to command it to change and rearrange. The reason why some of you aren't speaking is because you really don't believe what you say when you concentrate what you say is going to come to pass. And see, you've been having what you say because you've been saying what you have. And God is saying this, I need you to begin to speak what I've said about that situation and stop speaking what has been going on. That's why it's still there because you keep enforcing it by the words of your mouth. Satan has used your authority against you. And God is saying, I need you to change this thing around now. If you want to see something new happen, you're going to have to start talking new. Well, I feel like I'm being phony. No, you know, I wanted to say something. Glory to God. God is saying, listen, you're going to have to believe it. And you're going to have to do it. <laughs> I just, this, I'm laughing because it's, it's this old phrase that I don't know if my grandmother used to say it or somebody used to say it. It is it, either is it is almost like let me let me let me let me clean it up. It's like either use the bathroom or get off the toilet. It's almost like either you're gonna do it or you're not. It's like God is trying to share with you his word, but if you keep determining you're gonna be stiff necked and hard heart, you're gonna wind up finding that you will never see that you are coming to the fulfillment of the promise if you refuse to believe. He says this, verse 18, and I'm still in Romans. How much time am I working with? It's time for me to get ready to shut down in a second. He said, who gives life to the dead and speaks those things and, um, and calls them as they, as they already existed. Verse 18, for Abraham, human reason, hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations as he has been promised. So numberless shall thy descendants be. Now watch this. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the utter impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's dead and womb. Don't you know if God promised them, and some of y'all ain't in this situation, if he could do this for them, why couldn't he do it for you? Huh? They believed. That's why they conceived. Mm. Can you believe again? Can you believe? And you need to say, I believe, Lord, I receive. Be just like Mary. When the word of the Lord came and said, you're going to conceive a child? Oh, you're going to call his name Jesus. And Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. Some of you said, come on, prophet. Be it unto me according to the word of the Lord. Be it unto me, God, according to your word. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Be glory. Be it unto me. That's what you need to start saying. Yeah, and it is so, glory to God. And it is so. Be it unto me, Lord. 
Being unto me according to your word. You need to get in the habit of saying that. When the word is being preached, I'm about to train y'all on that. When I speak something, come on. And my man, uh, Bill Winston, always says, say amen to that. It's almost like, say so be it. Agree with it. Come on and agree with me. Agree with the word of the Lord. Stop fighting in your mind and see if you're going to. Some of y'all think too doggone much. Just believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. All things, not some things, all things. He said he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20. It says this. It says, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtly questioning concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong, man, and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. He did not weaken. He grew stronger. How did he grow stronger in that word? By giving praise and glory to God. This is how we grow stronger in the promise. Father, I thank you and I praise you for the word that you spoke. I believe that I receive it and I give you glory. I give you praise and I give you honor. And I keep the right attitude and disposition. This guy did this for 25 years. <laughs> Can you believe him and his wife did this 25 years? Not many times we talk about Sarah, because remember, in the beginning, she laughed at that thing. It was like, what are you kidding me? Nope, God promised it. And see, that's a lesson right there between even with husbands and wives. Sometimes if one person don't believe it, the other one got to believe for both of them. Sometimes you just got to say, nope, this is what God said. We're going to believe. We're going to trust. And the other one will come on board. All right. Sometimes they don't have the faith, but you do. And sometimes you got to carry their faith until they get to that point they can believe too. And then y'all come into agreement and say, doggone it, that's it. I don't care what's happening. Listen, I thank God. As, as my wife and I have been going through, man, we've been married 22 years. But I always remember whenever we would go through things, neither it, we were never down at the same time. It was always if one was down, the other one was still in faith or vice versa. And that's the thing that kept us going. Nope. What did God say? We ain't giving up. Uh, uh We got too much we got to do. We ain't giving up on this thing. That's what I'm talking about. And God is faithful. I am so sensing that this is a time where there will be dreams and visions fulfilled like you have never seen before. That God is quickening his people. Listen, some of you that have been through things for years, that God is saying, I'm going to restore the years unto you that the canker and the palmer worm and the caterpillar, you have heard these prophetic words for years. And this is why some of your hope has been deferred or making your heart sick. But God is saying, I'm still speaking it, but you still got to believe it, that I'm going to restore years that have been lost. I'm going to restore years that have been lost. I am going to restore back to you. I am going to restore. I'm telling y'all, God is telling me some stuff that some of y'all, I got to get y'all's faith up there now. We got to talk kingdom now, y'all. We can't, we can't, we can't go in shallow waters no more. It's time to swim into the deep. The deep is calling unto the deep. God is saying, I see people's wounds being recreated. People who have had hysterectomies, I'm telling you, new God recreating your inward working so that you can produce again. For some that's desiring, some of you don't desire to have more children. But I'm talking about for those that are desiring, God says, I never designed your body to be broken down and to be dissolving for, ooh, and for anything to ever be ripped out. He said, if I put it there, it was there for a purpose. And if it didn't function right, you just needed it to be healed and restored. I'm, 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 y'all got to hear me now. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't preach at low level. I got to bring you up. I can't preach low. I can't preach low. This is what God is saying. He says, I never designed that. Now God said, listen, don't condemn yourself. If you had surgeries or things of that nature, I understand all of that. He says, but I've always created you to function perfectly in your physical body. That's the word. That's my will. If it was not my will for you to be completely healed, why would Jesus do it? God meets us at the level of our faith. So I'm not saying don't condemn yourself. God will work with doctors as long as you're healthy and strong. I get all of that. God wants to restore. And I'm believing and I'm expecting creative miracles to begin to take place. Okay, doggone it, I'm going to preach it. 
Listen, I don't care if stuff has already happened. There could be creative things that take place that he remove. You remove one kidney and God going to restore it again. And then you're going to wake up and you're going to realize how you use in the bathroom. It's like, wait a minute, something going on different. I sense something different in my body. And you're going to go back to the doctor and they're going to say, okay, let's take an x-ray. Well, ma'am, miss so-and-so. Remember when we took this out, it's been replaced again. And God is saying, I'm going to restore unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm restoring to you body parts that have been taken out. And God has said, it is going to be a sign and a wonder. God spoke to me in this thing. He says, signs, wonders, and miracles are going to hit your ministry and hit your life. And I declare it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do the work, Lord. Recreate it. Bring it now to confirm this word with signs following. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. He was fully satisfied, verse 21, and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was credited to him as righteousness, right standing with God. Verse 23, and amplify, but the words it was credited to him were written not for his sake alone. Go, come on now, this shouting ground now. But they were written for our sakes too. Righteousness standing acceptable to God will be granted and credited to us also who believe in, trust in, adhere to, and rely on God who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification, our acquittal, making our account balance and of <laughs> glory to God, making our account balance. <laughs> glory to God. Oh, Jesus. That's, oh, I'm sorry. Listen, who he balanced the account. Oh, we were in the negative and he balanced us out. Jesus took the penalty for what man, for all of the sin and all of the crap that we did. Jesus paid for it, and he balanced our accounts, absolving us from the guilt before God. We are not guilty. This is why you can receive everything. God does not treat you like you did anything wrong. He treats you according to the righteousness that you have received by faith. This is why you can believe you even now. And the Lord says, I will restore. I will restore. Now, this final piece of this word. God says the part of you coming out of deferred hope is setting your goals, strategizing a plan and executing that plan. And you will see progress. Now, I'm going to say this supernatural progress or fruitfulness, which will turn, which will in turn bring life back to you again. And this question is asked, are you structured to receive what you were believing for? God is saying, you go to say, I, I need you to, I need you to receive this. Just say, say, I believe and I receive. Say, be it unto me according to your word, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have entered into the dimension and the season of this kingdom, renaissance and manifestation of the glory of God and signs, wonders and miracles. So expect to see this year, this year, now, some of you coming off of medications, never to go back on again, weight reductions and losses, body coming back into alignment and chem perfect chemical balance. Yeah, yeah. Perfect chemical balance from the inside out, from skin condition to scar tissue being healed, removed, new cartilage being replaced. This is a time to believe for signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, I declare, and I declare an outbreak of signs, wonders, and miracles now in this ministry, in the lives of our people, in the lives of the body of Christ, signs, wonders, and miracles now in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive, receive, receive. Yeah, you need, we're going to replay this. 
We need to replay this. We're going to replay this over and over again. The word of the Lord needs to get to the masses. God is saying, I'm infusing you with faith now. Yeah, there's a quickening, a quickening going on in you. There, yeah, some of you, come on, you got to receive it. Yeah, some of you crying, some of you fighting. Now, see, that's the enemy trying to fight the word that's being sown. Yeah, they both, they, they go, man, they both at the corner. Loose them and let them go now. Come off of their mind and their thinking. Yeah, shakumba. Both those they come my little bush again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare, I declare and decree. Yeah, as an ambassador for Christ, a citizen of heaven, representative of the Most High God, El Shaddai, Yahweh, the many breasted one, Jehovah God. I speak peace and life, health and healing. I normally don't do stuff like this, but go ahead and stretch your hand to the screen. Wherever you are, receive the power of God. Receive the flow of the anointing. Yeah. Checkbook. It's something like you're checking. It's like I can see numbers. I see it's almost like you're, you're budgeting and strategy. There are things that God is getting in order. Your finances are getting in order. Things are getting in order. Your life is getting in order. You're getting things in order. You're getting things in order. Listen, some of you need to do your wills, your estate planning, all of that. It's not because you're getting ready to die. It's just God is saying set order to your house. When you set order, there's going to be such a funnel. It's almost like the power has been released, but you setting things in order is like you setting up the container to receive everything. And it's like the minute certain things get in alignment, it's like a pipe. Once it gets in alignment, that flow is going to shoot to you. And there are going to be things that begin to open up and happen because you have certain things in place. And now God is saying you can handle the next level that I'm taking you to. And so you need to get ready for that. Yeah. 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 This is it. This is what we prayed and prophesied for for years. The body of Christ has entered into a new dimension, new season. We're entering into. I understand some people say the same season. Yeah, it's certain. Uh, the season will change when the word comes forth. The season changes when the word comes forth. Everybody else can participate in everything else. For us, this is what the Lord is saying. The season has changed for you. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah, from the oldest to the youngest. And your children should walk in the blessing that you set up for them. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, I, I share what I was supposed to share today. Hallelujah. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, just, just you repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord, and I make you the Lord of my life. Yeah, say, I make you the Lord of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. We're believing, God, for people to get born again and say, we, if that's you and this is your first time you've given your life to the Lord, this is the first time you've ever made that confession of your faith, you said, listen, I'm born again. We want you to connect with us. Let us know. We want to we want to connect with you and help you develop and grow as a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, we love you so much. Also, there may be an opportunity for those who don't have a church home, but you want to connect with us. Obey the spirit of God. If you know that he's calling you to connect with us, we want you to now just reach out to us and say, hey, I want to become a part of this ministry. What is it that I need to do? You can send the connect form connect card, connect card and information. Fill it out. Let us know. And we'll have somebody get in touch with you. We thank you all so much for showing up here today. We don't believe it's by chance, but we also want to give you an opportunity to sow. Sow into this word you just heard today. To the degree in which you receive, give. Give. We're not going to pry to pry. We're not going to pump. 
But I do believe this. A lot of times people don't receive because they don't, they don't do their part. And I'm not doing this to manipulate or none of that. I just truly believe this. And I've seen it throughout scripture. It's something about when you connect financially because finances, money represents your heart. It represents your livelihood. It represents your effort, your sweat. And what a person's treasure is, their heart is. And this life-giving word has been poured out. You need to sow and connect with this thing. I'm, I'm just going to be straight up. You know, <laughs> amen. As God lays on your heart, whatever he wants you to give, go ahead and give. But we, you need to give something. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, Jesus sat and watched what people were giving. He was watching over the offering as people were sowing. He said, listen, this woman who gave the two mites gave more than everybody else because everybody else was out of their abundance, but this woman gave it. He said, that, that was a precious seed. Jesus is watching. See, you're so concerned about if I'm watching or somebody else that sometimes people can hide behind the screen and don't give and you know, they might give in person because they feel under, under the gun to do it. But see, this is between you and the Lord. And then you're trying to figure out why certain things don't work because you're not participating in the process. I'm just helping y'all. I'm telling you. I've seen things transform and change based off of a seed that was sown plus my faith. Come on now. Oh, man. There was someone. Uh, hallelujah. Don't you know one of the promises of a tither is, um, it says, bring y'all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing, you won't have room enough to receive it. And let me read it. Let me read it to you. And your vine shall not cast her fruit before its time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. I remember I was in the service one Sunday and the word of the Lord came to me. Um, it was even to my sister-in-law. It was like that she was pregnant at that time. It was like God told her, don't worry about the birth. And the pregnancy, that things are going to be well. And it was just a word that she needed to hear. But God showed me something that day. That a promise of a tither is for your fruit to come forth and that it remain. That's not just financially. That's in every area. And that's the power of the tithe. That's a promise of a tither. That sometimes as you honor God, he honors you. Because you're doing it as a form of worship, honor, and recognition to him. Father, I thank you for blessing me. I thank you for keeping me. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. There's some information that's coming up on your screen to sow and to give. Just, you can follow the instructions. We pray over your seed. We ask God to bless and to increase you all. And that you be fruitful and multiply and that your fruit remain. Well, y'all, I'm out of time today. Certainly not out of message, but I believe that there's something that was shared that it was a blessing to you. Go back. Let somebody else know about this. Send this out to somebody. Tell them, listen, you got to listen to this. You got to hear this. So much more that God wants to share and say. But I believe that I've obeyed what he laid on my heart to share today. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare and decree that the blessing of God is upon your life. That you walk in fruitfulness and godliness that God grants you the desires of your heart and that you increase more and more, you and your children. So, Father, we just thank you and we bless you. Even as we leave this time, but we never leave your presence. Thank you that the angels of God are encamped around about us to keep us, to protect us in all our ways, that no evil plague will come nigh our dwelling, nothing evil shall happen to us. With long life, you satisfy us and show us your salvation. We live long and we live strong. We bless you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.